So the guys at OpenAI just released their GPT-4.0 and I wanna show you some use cases as a designer, what it can actually do. And I'm pretty surprised it's really good with text. It can do mock-ups and it can do a bunch of different styles with minimal prompts. Like you don't have to do lots of prompts. Um, you can do it in a single prompt, but it's also good in multi-sequence prompting to perfect a design. So for example, let's start off with the first use case. Let's do like an infographic. So I created here, I just said, generate me an infographic about bananas. Uh, I didn't even spell it right, but you can see you get this cool little image here simple cell shaded illustration style you got nutrition facts and you can see the text is all clean and um, the layout could probably be a bit better like the spacing issues and stuff like that but overall like it looks pretty good what i then got it to do everyone was creating ghibli characters uh, it's like this art style i used an image of myself you can literally just drag any image and drop it into the space below and it created this image of me and my wife which is super cute <laughs> looking fresh there but yeah i think this is a bit of fun to create and then it did something a bit more complex so I was like, turn me into a cowboy. I just dropped a PNG of myself here. Then it created this image. It got my facial features pretty well, like my mo um, and my little hair there and my, my thick eyebrows and the fade, the hat. I thought it was really cool. Like the color composition, browns and reds. And it has that vintage vibe, which is cool. And then I asked it, now turn this cowboy image into a Red Dead Redemption 2 style poster with high contrast with text uh, below. And then I said headline and subline, and then I just got this text from Claude and it created this. And I thought it was pretty close to, if you look at Red Redemption um, 2, it has this grungy style, very uh, like image traced vector shapes, really grungy, which is cool. And it created that. And then I was like, okay, let's push it a little bit more. So I was like, let's swap the face with the reference image of Elon Musk. <laughs> and I said, also update the style with more color, more vibrant and add a pistol in the cowboy's hand. And I got this, which literally looks like the Red Dead Redemption 2 poster. So I thought this was really cool. Yeah, it even got like textures and the colors right. Like it looks so close to the actual game. And the text is so clean. Redemption comes at a price when the law runs out, outlaws run free. Like even the style of the font is like unique. It's not just a generic sans serif font. It's actually a font that you would like feel in, the, in that game. Beautiful. Then I wanted to see if it could do like a creative ad. So what I did is um, I used this picture of Wally and I asked it to use the style of pixel art. So I just got those images online and there was some copyright issue because it was Wally. So they said they, it started generating an image and then it like um, took it back. And then I said, redo it, but just swap out the robots. And it created something like this, travel to Mars, set up for a new future in the pixel style, which is cool. And the cool thing is like, you can swap these characters out. Like you just add an image and you can say, swap the character out. For example, let's just like drag this guy and I say, swap the small robot for this character in the reference image. You can change styles, you can add text. And it will do a good job at adding the text and being clear. I haven't really tested about layout, like I'll add the text in the little corner, like the bottom or the left. I haven't really tested that. I've only tested just simple things just to get an idea of what it can actually do. While that's generating, I'll show you another use case. I have this little bottle of castor oil. I put it on my hands and my skin's a bit dry. I literally just took a photo of my phone, right? And I just asked it, generate a luxury mock-up for this castor oil, use calm colors and warm tones. And it generated this almost perfectly. You can see clearly like the logo, uh, the text, and even the icon, it's literally almost identical. It's probably like maybe a tiny bit different. Like the icon here, there's a bit of a flower there that's not showing. And then the line on top of the Y is not 100%. But overall, the lighting is beautiful. Like you can see the reflection of the bottle. It's a soft diffusion effect. You've got the blur in the background as well, depth of field. And it just looks really cool. And one feature that maybe some people aren't mentioning is at the top right, you can actually select and you can edit just like in Photoshop and other apps, but we can just change things. So what we can do is let's like do something like this. I can say, add a miniature Monstera plant. And then what else we could do? We could say, um, add caster plant seeds and then press enter. It is a little bit slow, just keep that in mind. Now another use case, it can actually understand logo. So this is a logo I did for a client for Scalable. I said, make this logo 3D with the interstellar style background, add grain, a subtle vignette to the image, make the focal point on the logo. So you can see the corners are a bit darker, which is cool. It's got some nice lighting here. 
the yellow. Um, you can see there's got it's got green if we zoom in and it's got like a nice shadow. I think this is really cool. The colors probably could be a bit nicer. So I said, use the colors from this image. I just found this image uh, online. It's a color palette. It's got hex codes. And what I found out is that it can actually read hex codes, which is cool. So it's got the moss screen. It has a hex code here. So I can go and copy that, drop it in Figma or Illustrator, whatever I want. And then I said, use the colors with the logo above and make a logo business card mock-up. And it created this. It used the text from the previous generation because I'm in the same chat. So you have to be really clear uh, on what text to use. So I dropped in this image from my Dropbox and I said, swap the text to the word scalable, use the image attached. And it did this, which is cool. And then I said, make the text the green color. You don't even have to put like asterisks or like quotes, quote marks, it just understands it. And you can see here scalable, boom, looks great. Um, and now I've got more of a Lux vibe. <laughs> the logo looks good with the gold foil. It's a simple mock-up and you know, we could edit and maybe I say, um, add a luxury gold leaf or something. Press enter and we can see the Monstera plant. That's mad. We can see it looks good. And also it adjusted the color correction. It also adjusted for the depth of field. So it's got that blur on it, which a lot of things don't do. Like you'd have to very be specific. So this like nails it like right out the, the gate. Let's go back to that other image. It contains a real or realistic person aware that might violate. Okay, that didn't want to work. So you got to be careful with certain like humans and real people. But if it's like art, it might be all right. I'm going to copy this. Just press control V, paste it in. Okay, and I'll say, um, you can same colors from the image. So turn the creative ad into the cyberpunk style. You can same colors from the image. Add a drone car. And I'll say also add small text in the middle center. I'll just say it has the address. I don't know what it's going to do, <laughs> but let's just try that. And then let's go back to this. Oh, beautiful. So it didn't fully add. I wanted the leaf to come out in the corner, like overlapping out from the corner like this, instead of like just having the element sitting there. But I think it still looks really good. So that would be a cool mock-up. I don't know if it, it could change the ratio. So let's try and... I don't want to copy, I'll say change the ratio of the image to 16 by 9. Cool. So what it did, it actually created the, the file or like a link. I click it, I'm going to download it and it's given me this, which is still all right. I can bring it into Photoshop and just um, add, uh, do generate a fill on the sides. That would work great. But I wanted to fill it out the design, but it didn't. But I still think it's great because I have an image really fast and it just gives you a link. So that's that's sweet. I think that's a really cool feature. Let's see what it did with the poster now. Cool. So it, it didn't keep the robots. I should have maybe specified, but it did create something like this, which is cool. It's got the grunge. I love the colors. It's mo it's moody, cinematic. Love the contrast. Uh, I think it looks mad. It looks really cool. You can see some of the crazy examples people have been creating on uh, on X, on Twitter. <laughs> A lot of cool stuff people have been doing, you know, diagrams and some really interesting things. Make an organ cross-cut version. And um, what else? Ridge wallet, look at that. Retro style, voxel art. <laughs> Everyone's using memes for everything. So you can really do a lot of uh, extract assets from thumbnails. What? That's freaking smart. Taking the 3D of the shark. That's pretty insane. What the heck? <laughs> Minecraft, that's mad. What the heck? The text, I don't know what it said. That's freaking mad. So as you can see, um, oh, look, my friend Alex, he made something really cool. Look at that. Turn myself into a Carhartt robot. That's dope. So I think it's I think play around with it. It's fun. You can do a lot of crazy things with it. If you want to learn some more about AI, I do have a course on Skillshare called AI Magic. You can check it out. I'll put a link below. And if you want to watch another video of how I create some logos, then you can watch this video right here.